Well, good evening and welcome to the A Trip to the Moon live podcast as we provide uh, reaction to the news that has come out of uh, Prenton Park today, which of course is the sacking of Ian Dawes as Tranmere manager after six defeats in a row. Not many people uh, can outlast six defeats in a row, can they? Uh, but six defeats in a row is what it's taken for Ian Dawes uh, to lose his job as Rovers manager. And of course, now the rumour mill will go into overdrive as to who might replace him as Tranmere boss. But first of all, we do need to uh, provide reaction to what has happened today. Uh, Tom Boys joins me. Uh, we're going to be joined by Tom uh, Gill uh, very shortly. Rich Davis will be on the show later on as well. So we're going to get a plethora of opinions and as ever, if there's anything you want to say on the subject, put it in the comments box. We will uh, we will endeavour to discuss it if we can. Uh, also, you can uh, drop us a tweet or you can drop us an email as well, a trip to the moon pod at gmail.com if you want to do that. But uh, yeah, that's basically the format for the next hour. Uh, we're going to be here till about eight o'clock just discussing today's news and uh, getting some reaction from uh, as many people as we can. Um, Tom, I'm, I'm casting my mind back to when... Either it was the start of the season or Ian Dawes was appointed as manager. And I'm pretty sure we had you on one of those shows. And I, I'm pretty sure you also said you weren't expecting to see Ian Dawes in the uh, job particularly long. So how do you look at it now? Are you are you particularly surprised? Yeah, no, I, I don't think it. I don't think it came as a surprise to anyone. I mean, if you just have to go back onto the... When he when he was posted on Twitter and the comments underneath, I think ninety nine point nine percent of people associated who, I mean, even people outside of the club, were stunned. Um, like I said at the time, there was no real reason you could warrant giving it to him. I know he, he got his pro license; that was the one tick, but that's a certificate. There's plenty of coaches who've got those, and people in jobs around the world who have got a certificate on the wall, but aren't very good at the practical side um he had a test run for it um the games at the end of the season um which again they were dreadful um and i think the, the frustrating thing is mickey went at the time he did and the idea was so we would be prepared for this season so preparation in terms of right we're going to change the playing style from mickey's quite defensive 4-4-2 um we want to move more in the direction of a coach who can develop players i also said that a number of times we need to develop and sell players um clearly with the financial situation as it is that's quite a priority um so we had 10 games at the back end of the season to start implementing that we did see a change of system to a 4-3-3 um he's then had the whole summer to obviously ship players out bring players in to fit that I don't think we really did. I mean, straight away, you think of, if you sign Norris and Dennis, two really good players, but they're not, like you're certainly not fitting both of those in a 4 3 3. It's probably one or the other. Um, and then the start of the season, we've, I mean, I think we've played about four or five different systems. And you'd argue that the one system we maybe should have gone with on, particularly on Saturday, was an old Mickey 4 4 2 just to try and batten the hatches down, down the wings. Um, so I think he, it's not a come as a surprise to anyone. I think it's clearly the right decision. And I mean, there's going to be a lot of people saying we told you so to, to Mark. Tom Gill joins us as well. Tom, great to have you on. Um, as many listeners who are regulars on the podcast will know that you are one of the more positive fans, but even you, I think, lost faith a, a few games ago, didn't you? Um, it's been a dreadful run of form. The, the action had to be taken after six defeats in a row. But it's it's much more than that, isn't it? I think that's where some of the disappointment and the anger has come from over the last few weeks is that there are a lot of people out there right now who will be able to say, I told you so. And they were prepared, most of them, prepared to give Ian Dawes a chance when he was announced as the new boss just before that Northampton game. But they couldn't see it being a success based on those eight games that he'd had as, as caretaker manager of which only two ended in victory. The season comes, he gets a chance to bring in those new players. Thomas mentioned the style of football change. It did change. It changed to allow opposition to have 15-plus shots on Tranmere's goal every game, pretty much, and, and then try and see what you could pick up at the other end. 
and inevitably that ended in defeat. And I think that's the, the where the anger and the disappointment comes from. Yeah, definitely. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head earlier when you said, you know, pretty much every positive fan like me, I, I do try and keep myself balanced. I'll say when I see something negative, but I try and be positive or at least I try and look for positives in a game, look for positives in a performance, in a manager, in decisions. I always try and find positives. And I think it's it's very telling that so many Tramia fans were kind of in unison. It, it, it's crazy. I haven't had an argument with a Tramia fan all season. Because everyone's kind of sat there thinking, this ain't going to work, is it? And it's horrible. I don't, I don't like feeling like that. I went to the Open Day a, a couple of months back and I shook Dorsey's hand and I had a quick, you know, 30-second chat and I thought, you know what, I like him. I want him to do well. But it doesn't change the fact that I still don't think he's going to do don't think he's gonna do well. And like you say, he, he got the appointment towards the back end of last season off the back of some really lacklustre performances. And it left us all scratching our head thinking, you know, what if he was the standout character, the, the standout candidate, sorry, who else was going for the job? Or what is the what is the criteria that the, the, the Paleos want if he's the standout? And it I like to try and be as respectful as possible because I don't want to I don't want a bloke or, or anyone to go and lose their job. I don't want to see that. I don't take any pleasure from it at all. I want to be back in the trammy manager all the time. But it was always going to be. It was this. This is exactly how it was always going to turn out. Maybe it happened a couple of weeks later than people thought. Maybe a couple of weeks earlier. But nobody upon nobody thought that this was ever going to end in a Tramia promotion or even even a mid table. I think it was always going to be a huge ask. Um, he's massively underqualified. He talks a great, good game. He clearly understands the game. Clearly knows what his principles in football are. But a coach and a manager have two separate skill sets. I listen to a lot of the best 11s that you do, Matt. And I like the amount of players who say, yeah, Ronnie Moore didn't really care about the training. Didn't even didn't even partake in the training. Ronnie Moore just on the match day, bang. Right, now we're on it. Um, and so the skill sets for a coach and a manager, the two separate things. And I think Dorsey will hopefully go on and be a fantastic coach somewhere. But yeah, this it was always going to end up like this. And... You know, the fans, the, the negative fans, the positive fans like me, we're all in unison that this just had to happen. It's a shame, but it had to. It, it's, yeah, it had to happen. It was inevitable, unfortunately. Um, you were at Colchester yesterday, Tom. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, fair play to you. It must have been absolutely harrowing to watch, really, because, I mean, it's one thing getting beaten by Wrexham at home, local rival, terrible result, terrible performance. You can't mitigate mitigate against that, but you you can even there's even less mitigation for that kind of performance down at Colchester when they're they're clearly a worse team uh, than than a, a Wrexham or they they pose fewer threats to you and then they still manage to win by two goals to nil. So the, the writing, I think, I mean, I personally think the writing was on the wall before he went. I think he needed to win to save his job, and he knew that if they didn't, that was it. He has now left, and I found the statement that came out upon his departure really interesting so i'll read through this verbatim from the uh, the tramway website uh, the club can confirm that ian Dawes has today been relieved of his duties as first team manager nigel adkins will take over responsibility for the first team on an interim basis mark palio said ian Dawes got the team playing some attractive football but we haven't been able to convert that into points on the table injuries have no doubt played a significant part in this but football is a results game and I felt we needed someone more experienced at the helm to steer us through this period with a depleted squad, as confidence will be key. I'd like to thank Ian for his time with us, including his three periods as interim manager, during which he run, won a remarkable seven games in a row, and I wish him all the best for the future. Um, first of all, I'm pretty certain, like 100% certain, that he didn't win um, that many games in a row. It was five games that he was in charge for, and one of them was a draw, which they won on penalties. So there weren't seven wins in a row. Keith Hill came in and took charge uh, to to get that to eight games. But some of the other things that I, I, I want to take from it, I felt we needed someone more experienced at the helm to steer us through this period with a depleted squad, as confidence will be key. This is um, it's a complete other end of the spectrum to where we were in May when Ian Dawes was appointed, isn't it? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think the appointment of Atkins is the right one. I think it does need 
the best person in the building that we've got to try and come in and steady the ship um and he clearly is that uh it is a little odd for a, a technical director director of football to drop down and even go as caretaker i think i don't think that's a very common common thing that happens um particularly when the two coaches have still stayed as, as much as we know certainly there was no mention of them in the statements um the statement i mean the the to say we've he won seven in a row when it's five, I mean, at, at best it's lazy. At worst, it's trying to bluff the fan base, which at this moment in time is probably the last thing that needs to happen from the ownership of the football club. Um, I think there's a lot of things have been said, um, a lot of things that haven't been said, to be honest, in that they've gone very, very quiet as well. Um, the injuries, I think, like I, I've, been, I've been against doors. I will be fair. I think any team that, that loses Luke Norris is going to lose a massive part of how they play. You saw Harrogate, his build up and hold up play does bring players in. The two full backs, yes, I think O'Connor and Leak would start if they were fit. However, that isn't the main issue here at all. Um, and the evidence is there. He dropped Lee O'Connor because he got torn apart in the game before. Leak. I think would have got dropped if he hadn't got injured because he got torn apart in a game. So to say that they're like Josh Cogley and Ethan Bristow and they'd have solved all the issues, I think is very ignorant to me from from day one, the look like massive naivety in the tactics. Um, we are constantly getting left one-on-one -on -one down the wings or two-on-one -on -one from teams doubling up. We saw that, um, I think I actually said after the Salford, the Harrogate game, like we won that 3-0, but I thought it was flattering in that their right winger got in a number of times and they should have scored a goal and got it to 2-1 and who knows what would have happened there. We've seen what does happen typically with Tranmere when that happens. Salford, we didn't fix it. We got torn apart again and it's that tactical naivety and I think I, I think the man management as well I think we've got players who you thought Ian Dawes right he's a, a young coach he's going to help develop some of these players now Sam Taylor I think he out Sam is kicking on how much of that is down to coaching how much of that's down to Sam and just his natural progression as a player is maybe open to debate but there's other players I'm looking at like Reese Hughes being probably the most standout one in it You've got a lad there who technical ability is probably as good as anyone in the league, probably as good as anyone in the league above. You see his set pieces, his technical sort of finishing, some of his passing. The bit he was lacking was probably a bit of coaching on the dark art side of the game, a little bit of fitness. Yet this season we've not seen him. I don't think he's played a single minute of football, has he? Um, so we're not developing players, which was part of the... I think the argument when he got the job, we want someone who can develop players whilst getting results. So he's clearly failed in, in both of those. Yeah, I, I think it's a disaster of a statement. Um, I, and I'm pro the club, pro Paleos. I always have been. But I think he's just gotten stuck in this rut of trying to spin something to the fans that doesn't need to be spun. Because you've got two factions of the fans a faction of fans and I'm going to class myself in there who are generally positive and if you say it as it is I'll take it as it is and I'll support the club regardless um, and another faction of fans who if you spin to them they're, they're, they're more negative if you spin to them they won't they won't buy it anyway so no we don't need to spin just just say it as it is um, he doesn't need to tell us about Storzy playing attractive football because I've got news for you he hasn't had us playing attractive football we played well for 45 minutes against MK Dons. That was our best performance away at MK Dons. It resulted in a, in a defeat nonetheless, but that's 45 minutes of good football. I agree with what you're saying there, Tom. I think I think, I think against Harrogate, we were fortunate. Um, we deserve to win. So don't, like, I'm not getting carried away. You know, we deserve to beat Harrogate. But the performance was not tremendous. Uh, we didn't batter them. And there were times when we were still getting done down the, down the wings. We haven't played attractive football. Um, the Salford game, it was open. You know, either team could score 10 goals if they wanted, but that's not attractive football. That's, it was entertaining for that one game. But the rest of the time, 
Notts County breezed through us as if we weren't there. Wrexham walked through us as if we weren't there. And yesterday, to add insult to injury, Colchester United, who are one of the worst teams in the division, walked through us as if we weren't there. Um, so, you know, the, the statement to try and spin that, you know, he's had us playing good football. No, don't just don't, just don't say that. Just say he's been relieved of his duties. Because we haven't played good football. We're not entertained. We're not excited. We're not happy in the slightest. Uh, I will go a slightly against the grain and say I personally don't think Nigel Adkins is going to be much of a much of a replacement for now he might bring a bit of positivity and maybe turn things around short term but I think personally I think it should only be too short term he's not had a good job in a long time I haven't followed his career that closely but it's been a long time since he's had a standout sort of performance at a club um, his positivity might be one thing but um, I don't know if that's going to be a, a, a good enough fix long term I think it's going to be a short term quick fix so yeah, I think the statements was just trying to sort of cover up the fact that made a disastrous decision, a disastrous appointment, and it didn't need to be done. Just keep it basic, keep the statements basic. Um, because personally, if we've got no money, look on your your post match review, Matt, you kind of said it. You know, I, I think if if I think the guys who were on the show said if if things are we're broke, just just tell us how it is because I I'll accept as it is and I'll keep backing the fans, but I don't want to be told we're playing good football. And we're the most creative team in the division, and this and that. I just, I just want a manager who will get the lads up for it, and the lads to give it everything. Because um, at the moment we're, we're staring in the abyss, and the statements that keep coming from the leadership of the club sounds like they're baffled. They're like, "Oh, we've tried everything. We've brought in a man who is fully qualified. He's not fully qualified. We haven't tried everything." You know, the the the, the board, the, the leadership needs to have a real good look at themselves now, and that's coming from someone who has backed them the whole way. Um, it, it's it is it's a disastrous statement, and uh, I really hope they have got it wrong, and they're going to have to get this next one right. Yeah, hopefully they do get that appointment right. I think the real frustrating thing, as well, other than the fact that there are people out there who'll say "I told you so," is that it's it's it not only feels like it's six months lost, which it is, because the appointment was well, Mellon was sacked six months ago. It's two or three steps back since Mickey left the club. That there are there's a lot of things now that can't be undone since Mickey departed that need undoing if Tramira to stay save their status in 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 the football league and that is a huge way if, if we're what seven eight games into the season we're already talking about struggling to save a football league status because of the work that has happened over the last two or three months that's not a good position to be in I I, I still think they're in a better position than they were in 2014-15 and that there are lessons that surely have been learned from 2014-15 such as there won't be the opportunity for any new manager I mean there probably isn't the chance financially but there won't be the opportunity for a manager to bring in 20 30 players of his own when that January transfer window opens but that there is still a very perilous position and the club have clearly realized that they know that if Tramley were to be relegated now then it would be almost terminal to their future but Either way, it's six months lost and two or three steps back, Tom. I say Tom, you're both Tom. Boise. Yeah, that's the big frustration. And I think when Mickey went and then obviously some of the names that were mentioned, I mean, they are, the one everyone spoke about is Brian Barry Murphy. We know he was interviewed. We know he was pretty close to taking that job. If he'd have got that, I think you would see probably ironically a team very similar to how Colchester played yesterday in terms of the style. They have a very distinct way of playing. They've clearly recruited players to that. They had quite a lot of pace down the wing back areas. They had a goalkeeper very comfortable on the ball so they could play out from the back. They're not a great side at all, but they have a manager and a very clear plan and they've recruited to that. And it'd be interesting how they kick on was obviously they did Gillingham, they've done us they might get a bit of confidence and with how they play that might build up we're now back to stage one and the issue you've got is if you say you appointed barry murphy today to come in after seven games to a team that is i mean we, what we i think we conceded 61 shots in three games or something i saw a stat to come into that and then try and start implementing a style of play whilst trying to win games, stem the tide, that's a much tougher job than having a full pre-season for someone. And I think that's maybe where Mark has looked and thought, can we get Atkins in, steady the ship? Maybe that's for one week, two weeks, three weeks, could be a month, could be a season, as caretaker knowing us. Um, 
And at some point, maybe when we get a bit further away from that drop zone, that's the time to say, right, we've identified a really good young coach who can come in, who, in my opinion, should have some managerial success behind them to start putting that style of play and get us at the tables. I mean, there's still, the other thing we've got to say, there's still 39 games left and there's teams down the bottom who will no doubt get up the table. There'll be teams up the top of the table who will no doubt slide down the table. So it, it's, there's a lot of time left, but there's some major, major things that need to happen. And it is a wasted opportunity. That's, I think, the, the biggest frustration. Yeah, for me, I think that this, you know, getting rid of Mickey, you know, whatever everyone's opinion on it, getting rid of Mickey, it was a chance to think, right, okay, we've sort of stabilised ourselves in League Two. Now, the demotion, we were unhappy about it, we've stabilised. Let's refresh, let's build a, a model that we can work on and and make strides forward. Um, and, and I think that was the opportunity to bring in a forward-thinking manager with new ideas, you know, so on a Barry Murphy sort of, subject he wanted to bring his own staff in and a b team and that's the kind of structure i love the idea of that i i, I love the idea of that but we've just missed the pre-season to do all that to get all that structure in place to get the players and the personnel in you know the, the playing and non-playing personnel in to, to to follow that kind of structure that what apparently barry murphy wanted we've just that's all dead time now we, we've kind of missed the boat on that type of manager and now it feels like we're going to need to get someone in who can just get a tune out of this group. Just get a tune out them to survive for the season. Uh, I, I do agree. It doesn't take much to sort of suddenly storm up the division, but I think we're going to we're going to need a heck of a January transfer window to do that. Um, and how you know how confident am I that our temporary manager at that point? You know, it's probably going to be a manager who comes on a contract at the end of the season. How much are we likely to back him with really good signings? I'm not confident that this season is really going to be one the way we we achieve anything. If we stay up, great. Because at the moment we're it's looking perilous. At the at the moment, if we stay up, I'm happy. But we shouldn't be happy with that. Last season, I was willing to just put up with the absolute rubbish we were seeing on on the pitch because I was thinking, right, okay, this is the start of a development model. We already seem to have scrapped that development model and started a whole new sort of era, and we don't seem any further on to to achieving anything. And by the way, we're in a relegation battle now. So just staying up this season isn't good enough. That's treading water in League Two and not no Tramia fans should be happy with that. I was willing to put up with it last season and I don't want to put up with it again. Um, so yeah, this this dead past four, five, six months, it's just been an absolute waste of time. It's been a, a an opportunity to get the right people in, not just management, but you know, the 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 staff they need and the structure. Like I say, I love the idea of a B team. That opportunity's gone now. Now we're in the middle of a season where we're a dozen points adrift from where we want to be. And I don't think we're that attractive a proposition to any manager, really, if I'm honest with you. Uh, maybe that's a controversial thing to say, but who's going to want to come in and, and take charge when there doesn't seem to be a clear plan? So, yeah, I, I, the, the dead time, the, the dead six months has is, is really frustrated me. I know we've got a lot of messages coming through and don't worry, Rich Davis is coming on shortly. And we'll run through uh, some of those messages with him. But I wanted to talk to both of you guys about the fact that Nigel Adkins has taken the uh, the role on a temporary basis, interim basis. He is the new Tranmere manager. Um, <laughs> I guess the irony is, uh, irony is not the right word, but there are so many people who, when I spoke to them, they said Nigel Adkins would be manager by September or October. And if that many people are saying it, then that's kind of a concern, really, that that many people could look into the crystal ball and see that by mid-September, Nigel Adkins was going to be Tranmere manager. It was something I, like it concerned me from like a, a, an outside of the club looking in point of view. If you've got someone like Nigel Adkins looking over your shoulder, there's so much pressure on you as a, as a new manager when all the fans can see Nigel Adkins sitting in the, the stands knowing that he's won. X amount of promotions during his managerial career, and he's sitting there looking over you and casting judgment over you. Those fans are going to want, or some of them are going to want that man to be in the in the dugout on a permanent basis. And it has now proven that Adkins is in the role, albeit only temporarily. Um, what what's going to change? What can he change? What will he do to ch change things, Boise? I think, well, I mean, the, the starting point would be let's play a system and the players in the correct positions, which I think every Tranmere fan has 
and I think everyone in football has picked up on. We signed Christian Dennis, fantastic 20 goal a season poacher, and we are yet to see him play in that position. Um, I know he played sort of a little bit, up, he played more up front yesterday, but it was still, we weren't, we weren't getting him the balls in those sort of areas where he thrives. Um, he tended to play with a partner up front when he's had success as well. Um, so I, I'll be interested. I, I think you will see straight away a change of system. I would not be surprised if it's a 4-4-2 in the short term just to try and we've got to block those wings off. I mean, straight from the kickoff against Colchester, 10 seconds in, they flicked it wide and they had their winger one-on-one -on -one with Morris, which we all knew how that was going to end. So something has to be done to stem that. I think we've got the players to probably suit that system as well um i mean i don't know how like norris sounded quite close um even at the Wrexham game he was talking he he tried to sort of be fit for that so he might be available next week do you put him and dennis or him and taylor up front do you then go back to say connor jennings and hawks morris on the wings like like they've done for the last couple of seasons that would make sense to me. I think straight away, he's going to command a lot more respect in that team as well. Um, the players, he's probably he's probably the most successful manager that any of them will have worked for. I don't like back-to-back -back pro promotions to the Premier League. That That's quite a credit in the bank. Um, and I think the they will sort of, Pull out the stops. I think it was clear from some of the performances that the players weren't believing in what they were being asked to do. I think that is clear. I know people say, oh, the players aren't working hard enough, they're not trying. I, I would counter that a little bit for the players in that if you're being told, right, this is how we're going to play and you know this is going to be a car crash and you're Kieran Morris and you're getting left one-on-one -on -one with a winger who's whizzing it past you every single time with no help. One, you're going to look poor. Two, you're going to be a bit brassed off and demotivated. Um, and I think that's applicable to a lot of players. I think Regan Hendry, we, he's clearly a good central midfield player. He showed that at Forest Green, but he's getting on the ball. Has he got the options? And or is he getting two men closing him down and he ends up having to pass it sideways because he's under pressure with no options? I think there's a lot of players being made to look poorer than they are because of how we've been set up tactically. So I would like to think that we'll see a bit of a, a new manager bounce because of Atkins. I think the supporters will be a bit more energised off Atkins coming in, even temporary. Um, and I think the players will hopefully be in a system that can showcase their abilities a bit more. Yeah, I think that narrow factor has really killed those off. We, we, our two best players last season were our fullbacks. We've lost them both. We didn't replace them with with enough quality. Um, and yet our fullbacks are the two most exposed players under Dawes' systems. And he did nothing at all at any point ever to try and protect them. So I would like to think the first thing that Adkins does is keep things simple, protect your weak spots. Um, bring some positivity and a bit of belief. I think it's been going to be more mindset than tactical. So long as you can protect those fullback areas beyond that, the rest is is just sort of getting players in the right mindset. It, you know, Kingy used to say, we just sign good players and let them play. So maybe Adkins will just give certain players a bit of freedom because I agree with you, Boise. I think Hendry, for me, he's technically very sound, very, very, very sound. But for me, he's just been sticking to doing the basics in our team and it's not been enough. Let, let him go and express himself and travel the pitch and spread the ball where he wants to spread it. Um, so I don't think Adkins, tactically, other than protecting those fullbacks, needs to overthink it. Just send a 4-4-2 or some sort of variant out there to go and play and work hard for each other and believe in each other and back each other. And I think we'll, you know, that will get us through the season. But I do stand by, I don't think Adkins is going to be the long-term answer personally. But in terms of for now, Protect those fullback areas. Stop playing so narrow because we're giving teams unlimited balls into our box, which is just asking for trouble. Stop that from happening. Get the players' mindsets right. You do usually see a bit of a bounce back when a manager gets sacked. You usually see some sort of um, turn in, in results because players feel energised. Um, and hopefully this next few weeks we can pick up some results. And if we do, 
you feel back on track then. And if Nor- Norris comes back, you're, you're more positive. You feel like you've got your main talisman back. But yeah, this next few weeks, just get them thinking. Just get them working for each other. Get them believing in what the club is trying to achieve um, and protect those fullbacks. Simple as. Yeah, protection of the fullbacks is absolutely vital because that's been the, the key weakness uh, for my uh, point of view, from a defensive point of view anyway, going down those flanks. Uh, Tom and Tom, we've uh, taken up half an hour of your Sunday evening when you've probably got better things to do. Uh, so I will uh, I'll let both of you uh, leave us. But thank you to both of you for joining us uh, this evening and we will hopefully get uh, both of you on again uh, very soon. In fact, I think Tom Boys might even have frozen. So that's uh, that's where we're up to uh, with him. Anyway, we'll sub you two out and we'll move on to Rich Davis, who's going to join us as well. And Rich, who has fantastically come with the name Season Starts Today. Great to have you back on, Rich. First question to you is is the key question that we haven't got to yet. Is the next appointment that Tranmere make the most important appointment that they will have had to make in the club's history? Um, no. I think in football, every appointment's important. Um, this one, we all didn't... Uh, yeah, we've not nearly had a crystal ball, have we, as the uh, Super White Army? We've all looked at it inside at the time and then tried to get behind it. It's just not worked. Um, I'm like, you've had Tom and Tom. I'm going to be the dick. I don't know where Harry is, but um, realistically, sort of likes of, I don't think in football there's ever a nailed on appointment. The 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 Barry Murphy stuff, um, I get it. That, uh, it would have been great to have a B team. It would have been great to, you know, if we're going to go for that uh, developing ethos, go for that. But then on the other hand, I think that's probably, I don't know what the word is, a little ostentatious for the kind of what purse we have and, you know, and, and, and the way that we're going to be run. I can't see us having 40 pros on our books um, that really develop through and allow us to have two squads of players moving ourselves forward. Um so for me, this is the most important important appointment until the next one, because football is so is 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 so short term these days. Um, the feeling for me, that I've said season starts today. That that's what it feels like. Um, we, we draw a line under everything that's gone on there. I don't think we're going to wait a long time until we get a um, a new manager through the doors. Because, uh, oh, sorry, using his name in vain. Um, until we get a new manager in, uh, I, I think really. Uh, us going forward we probably will go back to that management merry-go-round um there probably will be quite a bit of humble pie i think maybe the the statement that's come out today is because i don't think um that mr palios will have wrote much of that himself i think there's probably uh an oversight on that there i, I think there is a little bit of humble pie going to be at by himself he's never going to come out as the kind of guy he is and say oh, i was wrong and and all, all sorts of um you know, uh, kind of uh, gushing statements to the fans of how silly I've been because at the end of the day, it's his club. So very important appointment, yes. Is it the most important we've ever had? No. Um, and, and it's probably just as important as the, the next one that's coming, really. Have you fallen asleep? Am I that bored? Are oh, you awake? <laughs> I'm here. I was trying. I'm trying to. I think my internet connection is playing up ever so slightly. So I was just trying to relieve some of the things that might be uh, using up my bandwidth at the moment. Um, right. Let's go through some of the names that have come through on the on the chat then, because there've been plenty of them. And I'm scrolling uh, right back uh, to the start here to see who might have suggested who should come in. Uh, so who have we got first of all? We have uh, Paul Gretton says, Root and Branch clear out of the coaching staff needed. Also, the players need to take a look at themselves. Uh, Matt Dodd says, I may be in the minority, but I don't want Adkins. We need something new, something fresh. For me, if it's a newbie, up and comer, as the budget would suggest, it has to be Clint Hill. Uh, Stephen Roberts says, Gary Bowyer. Paul Gretton says, David Artel. Uh, Paul Gretton also says, Ronnie until the end of the season. Um, and then we've got Snaps, who says Liam Richardson, Carl Robinson, Neil Ardley or Daryl Clark for me. But we all know it'll be Atkins or Dan's until the end of the season. Um, so there's a few names being thrown about there. Linger on some of them. Any of those names excite you, Rich? Um, I'll try and keep it a long answer so you can play with your dongle um, and see if you can get that working. <laughs> I think for me, looking at... Um... Looking at looking at sort of like to that list, yeah, 
I can't see it being uh, Atkins for a very long time because I know he said that I think I'm in the minority, but I don't want Atkins. I think, well, Atkins is in that minority as well. don't think he's got the thirst to manage the football club for a prolonged period of time. I think the job that he was taken on board is more of a, a, a... a token to Mark and then not a full-time thing with his um, kind of commitment. So realistically, I think that's why there's been maybe not as much influence on Dawes. I think he's come in almost like as a consultant and looked over certain things that Dawes was doing. For me, um, the names of like Liam Richardson from, obviously he's got his Wigan uh, good time. Uh, They didn't do too bad with them. Don't know enough about him to say that I'd screw my face up at it. Gary Bowyer, yeah, um, someone who I've heard um, a few murmurings about. Um, the the one thing that sticks in my mind is obviously the uh, Salford guy saying the one mistake we made with him was sacking him. But I know he's done a bit of time up in Scotland since then. If I'm honest, I think whoever takes the job this time round, um, it has got a bit easier than when Dawes came in from Mickey Mellon um, and when Jacko came in from Mickey Mellon. Because the reality of it is, is you only need to look at the small sample of social media that we have following Tramia. And there's an awful lot of people going, ah, well, look, and, you know, you said it was Mickey. It was the right time for Mickey to go for me. I think that he'd taken the club as far as he was going to take the club. And yes, he did do a good job. Um, In football, there's 24 teams. In League Two, out of those 24 teams, probably at least 15 or 16 of them start the season thinking they can get promoted. Um, and, and, And four of them will. Um, four of them go up, that's it. So there's going to be 12 teams that start the season that think they're going to get promoted that don't go anywhere. Um, for me, I think that Mellon did a very good job, um, but it's time it, it's time it come. It was You could tell that I think it, it, he was tired with it. He'd run out of ideas and to move us forward, it just wasn't going to happen. And that's not to any slant on Mickey's ability. I think Mickey Mellon will be a, break, a great manager wherever he goes next. And for me, I am kind of rooting that he does get them to a, a good club and probably higher up the pyramid than us because I'd hate to see him <laughs> succeed doing what Mickey Mellon does and, and us not. Um, I think... It, yeah, Clint Hill, um, I see the idea behind there, but if I'm honest, I feel like we're in a bit too much of a mess for someone like Clint. I, I, I think it needs to be uh, someone who's managed before, someone who straight away gets respect in the dressing room and straight away um, uh, can kind of calm the nerves of his fans. Because as you're quite right saying before, uh, Matt, we're, I feel we're a long way off saying we're nailed on for relegation. Yeah, the, you know, you look at the sample of people about, there's people out there saying we are in a relegation battle. And no doubt if we carried on playing the system as we are and, and being as exposed as we are and having so little buy-in from the squad as we are, I think that we, yeah, that we were nailed on for relegation if nothing was done, but Mark Palios has put his hand up and said this is not good enough and we need to make the change. Um, I'm I'm of the opinion that the man it hurts most is going out of the league is him. It, you know, it'll hurt us all as fans, but it's certainly not going to cost the the money that it would cost him with the commitments that he, he has taken on being the custodian that's the chairman of the club. So, for me, um, I can see it being a Bowyer. I can see it being maybe someone who has managed around the north of England. Um, and, 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 and I can't see it being someone from the National League. Could we maybe see, I think, a few shots of Chaloner. Um, He's put his hat in the ring two times out of the last three times that it's been uh, advertised as a job, apparently. Um, I don't know. Let's keep a watch on Twitter. Let's see if there's any adverts out for uh, left backs and managers in the uh, northwest area. Uh, please get in contact. We'll see who uh, likes that comment. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be one of the um, one of the uh, one of the usual names. And in reality, they're going to be sacked from somewhere. They may have been a little bit successful from somewhere. But I think it'll be a bit easier taking over from the catastrophe that is conceding 69 opportunities against us in three games. Um, you know. Uh, it's not going to take a massive amount to look like a hero. I I don't think with the squad of players, which he's got, which I I still do think is more than good enough to um, certainly uh, challenge towards the top half of this table. It's yeah, it's, it's interesting saying that something can be salvaged from this season because it obviously can, uh, although it does feel quite a long way away at the moment. And the, the, announcement today is hopefully the, the first step towards uh, where that goes. But I'm, I'm just looking at some of the quotes that are coming through. Paul Dolphin, um, 
Great to have you joining us, Paul. And if you haven't listened to Paul's best 11 interview, then do, because Paul hasn't missed a game for about 35 years. So he's got plenty of players to choose from, but also some great stories to tell as well. Uh, Paul says, with the position we're in, I think it's essential the new manager has experience and success on his CV. Now, there are two things to take from that. Firstly, and Mark has mentioned it in his statement himself, we're talking about an experienced manager. And I know I've already said this, it's complete polar opposite to what we were talking about just four months ago. Only four months ago when the, the new manager, the most recent manager, came in. So Tranmere again kind of flipping what they want to do on the head to try and be successful, which, you know, it, it is their will to do and they need to do it on this occasion. But at some point there is going to have to be, hopefully, a plan that will work and be successful. The second part of what Paul says there is that they need to have success on their CV. What does success look like to someone who Tranmere are appointing as manager at this stage? At a stage when Tranmere are only outside the relegation zone in League Two on goal difference, is success someone who they can bring in, who they know will be a firefighter and will get them away from the relegation zone? Or is success someone who has got promotion from League Two on their CV and we're looking longer term than just someone who can keep them up in League Two? For me, I think success at Tramier Rovers is going to be one thing and one thing only, and it's winning football games. Whether it's enough to get us promoted or not, that's at the end of the season. But we've got to have Fortress Brenton Park, as it was called. We can't have teams to come into Brenton Park and turn us over and score as many goals as Salford did. We can't have teams come to Brenton Park and bombard us like Wrexham did with what was basically the most direct football um, you, know, you could think of with long throws and corner kicks ultimately we need to put a team out that that, that the the fans recognize are actually caring and and having a go um not county away was a horrific performance and i sat in a mcdonald's car park calling doors for everything saying not all lost but you know you need to start acting like a manager so for me um and i think i put um i put it out today in a tweet you know it, tramia as a as a club for all of us to support it, it you know, this is not impersonal against an Ian Dawes. This is not impersonal against a Mike Jackson. You know, someone who comes in and it just doesn't work. But straight away, we know that it's just not what we expect. It's not acceptable. So for me, a successful Tramia man manager and a manager that will be successful with us is someone that you go the game and you know that he cares. You know that his players care. And you know that we're always going to be in something and whoever we're put up against, we're going to represent that badge, that shirt and and, and, and and that kind of work ethic that we expect. And I go back to, I think I've mentioned it before on the podcast, the conversation I had with um, Neil Critchley, um, who uh, uh, had just taken over at Blackpool at the time and Dawes had just come across to be Jackson's assistant. And... Um, I remember him telling me, you know, when he was looking through, uh, talking through football and saying, he said, try me a job. It's not an easy gig because the fans expect. And that's someone that's never managed our club. That's someone that's been a coach over at Liverpool. That's someone that's, well, what, what's he got to do with? He just knows it in, in football. It's known that we expect as a fan base. We probably do expect a bit more than how our cloth has been cut because we've got a statue of a man there that delivered absolute miracles. Um we, we took a team that was signing players in it, all right, a different world, but signing players of a local, um, you know, base playing at non-league and playing well below stations that we, we then developed them and moved them on. And you even only need to go back to the 2000s with the John Aldridge era when John Aldridge took a team of players that were probably slightly old misfits and some absolute diamonds of youth and forged them into some cup runs that scared some real big teams. So we as the, as the fan base... We, we expect that and we've got that in our heritage and, and, and in our, you know, 20 years feels like 10 minutes ago to us. You know, it, we're looking at teams like West Brom and Stoke and thinking, oh, yeah, I remember when we so-and-so did so-and-so. Oh, I remember we're a long way away from that in football. Uh, six games is a long time in football, as Ian Dawes has just found out. But we as a fan base expect so it's going to be it's going to be interesting and, and and a successful manager for me is going to be someone that comes in and has a go at it really looks for one as well i'll throw it in it got to look like a manager 
if the next person turns up and looks like they've just been to the USC sale and a scruffy little cap, I think I will put my head in, the, in my hand. Because to be fair, there's one thing getting beat and they're standing there on the sidelines, sulking with your hands in your pocket, not really looking like you, you care. If we're getting beat at home, I want someone on a Mourinho-esque uh, and an Aldridge-esque making it look like they're going to go in at half-time and have hell. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the kind of manager that we need. We need someone that's a motivator, someone that shows respect to the fans and someone that the players respect. And I think in turn that will mean that they respect you know uh, that they respect the manager and put um and put in the performances for us i'm gonna just go to a few other messages that we've got here dave says uh challoner would be great but could we afford him and his ambitions uh mutual on uk dave Challoner would at least organize us can't say i like his uh, playing style but that's no longer a priority would stockport want a fee when they are also struggling uh, and I think there's a few others who've mentioned Chandler at some point in this chat as well. I mean, I've, I have advocated for quite some time for Dave Chandler to get the Tranmere job. Um, and if you'd asked me six months ago, I'd, I'd said that they'd probably missed the boat. In fact, if you asked me three months ago, I'd say two weeks, two months ago, you, I'd, they'd probably missed the boat with Dave Chandler because he is probably past their level at the moment because he's, he's won promotions from every club that he's been at. Hartlepool filed Colwyn Bay, Stockport, and last year he was a losing playoff finalist as Stockport manager, and it looked like he would be someone who would be moving up the leagues as opposed to making a sideward switch. Now, there are some Stockport fans that appear quite unhappy with the situation there, and, and Stockport, I believe, accepted an approach from Charlton to interview him as manager, so that they, they, they were, at that point, open to losing him as manager. Now, I do know that they came from behind to win against Wimbledon this weekend, so maybe a little bit of the pressure has eased on him, but he is someone certainly that I would at some point like to see as Tranmere manager, and maybe this will be their last chance if he doesn't keep on moving up the divisions. But one thing I want to say or ask you, Rich, is because I've had a few people tweet me about this, is does the new Tranmere manager have to have a connection to Tranmere Rovers Football Club somewhere in their past. And, and I, I know a lot, and I'm, I'm waiting to see the comments come in and this, but because a lot of people disagree with me. I think it is quite important that they do. And I've said this before. I think that the person who comes in does need some kind of connection to the club because there've been so many managers who have come to Tranmere, who've not had a connection with Tranmere, who've just, they've just not got the club as a fan base and they've not been successful. And as a result, that they've they've left the club fairly uh, in a fairly bad manner. John Barnes came in. We knew that was going to be a disaster of an appointment, but he was someone outside of Tranmere who didn't get the club, and he left within three or four months with his tail between his legs to an extent. Brian Little had a modicum of success, but probably should have got Tranmere up in two thousand and four five when Rovers threw the book at getting promoted that year, and then they had to rein things in when they lost the playoff semi finals, and, and we all know that the semi final at. at Hartlepool was a bit, a bit of a disaster, really, in terms of a tactical setup. So he's someone else who was outside of the Tranmere bubble who came in and, and probably more successful than others. But Mickey Adams failed. Gary Brabin, some people will say he failed. Some people will say he steadied the ship. I, I will be in the, the second camp there. I think he steadied the ship, but it went no further than that. Keith Hill, we all know how that ended. Whereas the, the people who've been successful, Aldo, Cup Final, I know ultimately Tramir got relegated that season, but he got Tramir to a cup final. He, he had Tramir links. Johnny King, three promotions as Tramir manager. He had Tramir links. Mickey Mellon, two promotions as Tramir manager. He had Tramir links. Ronnie Moore, within whisker of getting Tramir to the playoffs uh, in 2009, Tramir links. So the, the, to, to me, it's somewhere there needs to be a link to Tramir in that past. I, and I know that that completely whittles down the number of candidates and a lot of people will disagree. But I just think that it helps if they get and know the club a bit. Because if you don't, as you've already mentioned, Tramway can be an expectant bunch and they can be a hard bunch to get on board with you. I totally agree. We, you know, I think it gives an advantage um to know the club. But let's be honest, this um if they demonstrate and they, they create a bond, it's not going to be a problem. I think the one thing for me, like straight away seeing people oh duncan ferguson's artwork get him no no it's the wrong that's the wrong local connection duncan ferguson is 
definitely not the kind of camp that we need someone coming through so much so that I I absolutely love Mark and uh, and Nicola and what they've done to the club and I'll probably touch on that a bit later I know there's a lot of people thinking they're the devil right now and I get it He's, it was a crap appointment putting doors in but for me yeah having an, a, a, a a reference of what the club's you know sort of uh, about is definitely important but then I've just told you that you know it likes if someone like Neil Critchley knows that it's a hard gig. We've got to have a manager that comes in that knows that they've got to succeed. And the easiest way of calling success in football, it's not XG. It's not playing It's not playing the defence 10 yards further up the pitch. It's not having the best possession stats. It's about winning games. And that's what we're at now with the Tramia situation. One, because the table tells us we're going to have to win games because someone's not coming in with any buffer. They're coming into a season with a squad that they've inherited and they've got to deliver results. You start winning games, you start getting Prenton Park rocking and you start Tramia fans being proud of being Tramia fans again. It don't matter whether you know you, you you're from T- Torquay or Tramia. You know it, it. It don't matter whether you know you you been to Birkenhead once, or you shop every day in the pyramids. As far as I'm concerned, sort of likes of this now. It's a win at all cost. Likewise with the style of football, I, I think there's an awful lot of people that are talking. Um, talking about sort of likes of uh, the comments about Dawes played. Uh, you know some good football. Well. Do you know what? Compared to what Mickey Mellon served up, I only remember quite a few people talking on social media saying, "Oh, it's better than uh, better than Mellon Ball." At least we make we're creating the chances against MK Dons, against Harrogate, uh, against uh, Barrow. You know, there was uh, those early games. People did say that we were we were creating more, and it was more entertaining. For me, the best entertainment I have is seeing. You know, let's be honest, League Two, probably a couple of hundred sad people opposite me in the cop. Or, you know, if it was against the uh, franchise Disney lot, I would love to have seen 2,000 really unhappy faces there. As it was, we saw 8,000 really unhappy faces. So for me, I don't care how we do it now. It's win at all costs. We've got to represent ourselves and put pride back into the club. Because let's be honest, we've got a lot still to be proud about. You know, we've got that big glass tent that's going to be built. And, you know, all is not lost this season. But when you look at what we've done and been through and drive to Nottingham to see that kind of performance against Notts County when we should have been beaten heavily 5-6-0, to see us against Wrexham concede 20 opportunities at goal and then miss two or three sitters and us offer nothing, to see our best player from last season sat on the bench, to see a player with, on his day, the best ability in the league being played at left-back, hung out to dry because he's not fast, he's not nimble, He's tricky with the ball at his feet, Kieran Morris. That's all he's got. So to put him left back and to destroy his confidence, to rip off a young lone lad who we've just brought on after 40 minutes, that's soul destroying and a joke. To have opposition fans empathetic at how poor we are playing is an absolute joke. So for me, it, it, they've just got to deliver, just got to deliver that win. That They will be one of us when they get Prenton Park bouncing and when we actually have a go at a team and play good football, win, look like we are the team that we know those players can be because they are massively underperforming. And they, quite frankly, a lot of them don't really care. I'm sat here tonight doing what I do most nights, which is having a beer and I've got my uh, my picture of Luke McGee because at this moment in time, this man is my positivity. That is all I have got from this season so far. What an absolute diamond we have found here. He looks like he'd run through walls for the club. And to be fair, he's played at least 33 men in the last three weeks because, you know, no one has absolutely turned up to help him. That, that boy, to be fair, get him on a longer contract, whoever comes in. And, and get him a car parking spot away from all the bird crap on the cop because we do not want him to go anywhere. Finally, we look like we found a goalkeeper. I was kind to Ross and I was kind to uh, to Quelt, but this boy looks like he's a keeper. Definitely keep him. So whoever it is, whether they've been to Birkenhead or not, no, I think they'll they'll they, we'll 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 support him if they deliver results because that's where we need wins. I have to say, I was very worried with where that sentence was going when you said you're sitting here doing what you do most nights. So I'm glad it ended the way it did. Um, also, I swear that when we started this, you were sitting in the full light and it's gone very dark. Uh, so uh, it, it is uh, maybe ticking on towards uh, where we should finish. Uh, 
I did expect some of the comments to come through when I said uh, that they should have a connection. Stu Higginson, uh, fresh start, best man for the job. There is no one who fits the connection model. Uh, let's just get a decent manager for once, not the cheap, easy, oh, he gets the club option. Uh, Paul, I don't think you have to have Tranmere connections. Winning games creates a bond. Managers will know all about Tranmere and expectation. Uh, no need for a narrow po uh, pool of candidates. Uh, Paul Lawrence also said if, if he does have to be, or it has to be someone with a connection to the club, who are the candidates? As I said, it does limit the pool. I completely agree. And there aren't many of them out there. Uh, you probably are at this time looking at a Challoner or a Clint Hill or whoever else has decided to start their managerial journey somewhere. Um, I think, but as much as the, the manager is important, the assistant is important as well. And I think one of the problems this year is that you've got a very inexperienced coach being given advice by a very inexperienced assistant manager. And Neil Dans did really well at Macclesfield last year, but he's he's not got a great deal of experience. And and he probably needs someone who's got that experience alongside you as well. Uh, Paul also says, would Mark uh, consider bringing Mickey Mellon back? Uh, I am pretty certain that that will not be happening anytime soon. Fascinating future ahead. I mean, we will see where it goes, but it needs to turn around pretty quickly. And as some of the comments that have come in say, whoever the new manager is, if they do get two or three wins on the board fairly early, then then that will just flip things around slightly. Definitely, definitely. And, and that's it. Football is, is not a long-term game. You look at now, we've got half of the world's top players over the age of 30 playing in Saudi, and that's happened in the last two months. Things change fast. The game moves fast. Us as fans, as I said, 20 years ago was like 10 minutes ago. Um, we, we remember the games when we played so and so in in, in you know in front of 25,000. But to be fair, in football terms, it doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean nothing at all. I think as far as um, the, the the backroom staff, you make a valid point there. Whoever comes in has got to work with what they've got for a short period or do they have a total clear out straight away? Um, the total clear out straight away could have a a, a reaction with the, the, the lads in the team because I think it could put the fear of God into a few people that thought maybe they were safe for this year and safe for another, you know, sort of few matches in the team because they've really not been putting the effort in. I really hope whoever comes in um, is allowed that kind of, um, allowed that kind of autonomy to go out and, 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 and choose what they want. But reality is 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 budget tight. I don't know how long Neil Dan's um, contract is. You know, Danzy Parky. I don't know if you can just turn around and say, actually, sorry, there's no job for you here anymore um, with the contract they have, or if there is big burdens of pay. Uh, you know, that we're paying someone for two years or something like that. Which reality of it in football, you know, it, it's always risk reward, isn't it? You know, totally we could get the reward of the of the performance, but the risk is that money could be spent somewhere, so sort of spent somewhere uh, uh, somewhere else, which. We haven't got a, a massive pot for money. Uh, we were all crying out and people moaning that there's a one-month um, contract offered to someone. The reason we offered a one-month contract is because by the sounds of it, we've been chasing someone who has played higher up the pyramid. So instead of signing a lad from file for a year, we've signed him for a month and then we've gone out and got someone who's got experience with Bradford and Leicester for a year. So we're not at a football club where everything's perfect. And, and that's why, as I said before, I wanted to touch on it. Like, I'm as passionate a Tramia fan as you can get, um, I, but I do rec recognise there's people behind it. You know, we're we're not talking about someone like Ian Dawes that wanted to make an absolute balls up of the job, but he has. We're not talking about people like, um, you know, as I admit, Mark Palios. I don't think he wanted to have the record, and there is an element of humble pie. I think in in what he's done in sacking, I, I kind of thought he'd probably go for another couple of weeks. I didn't expect any more wins, but I thought he may go for another couple of weeks to try and prove. Um, the, the, a few fans wrong that this model could work, but he's he's done it now. He sacked it. We need to forget about that. We need to look forward um, until there's a man that's uh, or, or woman or company that steps forward with enough money to purchase the the club off Mark Palios. I think we've got to be uh, you know we've got we've got what we've got. And if I'm honest, I'm not disappointed with what we've got. I think the club being run ethically is correct. I think there is there's lots of people out there with gripes with him, and I don't think he is perfect. But at the end of the day, it could could be a lot worse, and I'm not saying that with the empathy of say, you know, the empathy of saying that uh, we could be Berry. I don't think that. I'm saying it in the way that, to be fair, we have had some success to get back to where we got got to. When he first took over the club, we did have that drop down. He did complete the double bounce under his tenure, but you can't really apportion that blame to him. I don't think in the fact that he appointed someone like Mickey Adams and give him total control to sign twenty odd players on loan. So for me. 
there's a lot to be still positive about. I love a bit of positivity. I feel that sometimes if, uh, uh, you know, that, that season we had the double bounce, we, we took the knockback from Forest Green the right way. When we got beat at Forest Green in the final, I was absolutely devastated in bits. But your personalities, your Norwoods, your Banks, is your, your, your players like the, you know, that were around the club, they... they carried on and kept knocking on that door and eventually it opened. So for me, I think that the squad that we've got, we need that kind of, to build that team spirit. We need someone in who can build that team spirit. And I do think an awful lot that we sit there and question, why is he doing that? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing it? You only question because you're losing games. If we're winning games, nobody cares. Like I wouldn't really care what he does look like on the sideline if we were winning games, but we weren't. So I look at that and go, he looks like a scruff. He doesn't look like he's proud to be Trammy manager. And he didn't look like he demanded any respect off the players. So I read into that because we're losing games. Just the same as someone can sit at home looking and go, well, Palios has appointed five unsuccessful managers. Well, look at most Premier League clubs and how many managers they've appointed that have been successful. If we're not in the Premier League, we'd love to be. I'm not saying he's perfect, but I'm saying it's all we've got until someone puts his hand up and says, I'm a better person to own the club and I can afford to buy it, which I'm a realist. I don't think there is at this moment in time any better hands than Mark Palios for this club because we are as close to sustainable as can be. And hopefully, you know, we have felt promotion out of this division before. He's pulled the trigger and got rid of doors. If he really didn't give a shit and it was all about money, 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 he could have just sat there and left doors in situ, got a load of tirade of abuse, not turned up to games. He's still going. He still cares. I really do think he's a fan at heart. Whether we agree with his decisions or not, well, ultimately it's his train set. We'll leave it there, Rich. I know there'll be people that disagree with you and there are people nodding in agreement uh, with uh, the points you make as well. I think the finance point is the biggest issue at the moment there. That's the biggest stumbling block. It's the thing that Mark Palos has been fighting against ever since he came to Tranmere, trying to make themselves sustainable. And unfortunately, the word trying is very much still in that sentence. They are still trying to make Tranmere self-sustainable. It hasn't happened yet. There are factors within uh, why that has happened. Coronavirus is one of them and the demotion uh, is one of them um, that happened as well. Uh, and there have been some decisions that have made that just haven't panned out and have, have ultimately proved to be mistakes. And, and that happens within all businesses. But at the moment, they're still not self-sustainable. And that's why, and I'm seeing the comments coming in here about uh, getting the assistant right and getting the coach right. I, I completely agree because I've just said it, they need to get the assistant right. But it might not be as simple as being a wholesale change to the coaching team because Tramir A might not be able to afford whoever a new manager wants to bring in and they B might not be able to afford to pay off the players or the people that are going to have to be paid off if that situation happens. And I think there are still in that backroom team, I still think there are very good coaches and very good people that still have something to offer to the club. It just might be that there needs to be some kind of shake-up uh, within there somewhere. Um but we will see what happens. Uh, we will leave it there for today. The figures have been huge. Thank you to all of you who've joined us at our uh, most viewed live show yet. And if you've missed any of it, you'll be able to catch up from the start as soon as we've finished. Um, thank you very much to all of you who've watched as well. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, uh, go to our website or go to our Twitter and you'll be able to find out how to sign up to the podcast. Uh, it only costs £3 a month. You get three, sh uh, three shows a week for that including our player interviews. Um, we've just had ones with Norwood over the summer, with McAteer. Uh, the last one was with Sean Teal. Um, we've had Pat Nevin on over the summer as well. So some huge names over the summer. And coming up very soon, we've got Ben Pringle talking about the National League, uh, sorry, the League Two playoff win and Reggie Maguire will be our next one as well. So that will come out on Tuesday. Uh, we also do match reviews every Sunday, although the one today went out of date within 10 minutes of it being published, which was absolutely wonderful. And uh, there's a new show building up to the weekend every Thursday as well. So that's what you'll get for your £3 a month. The trip to the moon pod.co.uk is the website to go to for that. Uh, thank you to all of you for joining us. Thank you to all of you for getting involved in the debate as well. Uh, we will be back when there is an announcement made over who the new manager is going to be um, we will have a live show on that one as well so we will speak to you then